Do you get tired after you've eaten? Do you find that you get that crash within 30 minutes um, after you've had a large meal? Perhaps you notice that sometimes that food tends to energize you, sometimes you tend to feel really tired after you've eaten and you just wanna lay on your couch. Well, if that's you, today I wanna to talk to you about the dysfunction that may be occurring because there's two specific things that may be happening in your brain and in your cells that may be driving that response that you can deal with quite simply. Now, but if you love our videos, please like and share our videos, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, turn on notifications, and we'll keep you up to date with the latest information that we put out uh, to keep you on track and keep your health 100%. All right, so let's have a chat about this, this fatigue after eating, because there's two specific things that we see that commonly drive this tiredness post eating. So one of them has to do with our brain, the other one has to do with our blood sugar mechanisms um, and what we call hypoglycemia. So when we start talking about the brain, one of the key things we need to understand is this hormone called serotonin. So this neurotransmitter or neuromodulator that exists in the human brain called serotonin has a very calming effect on the brain itself. It's also a very strong and important precursor to melatonin, which is really, really critical. So when we start looking at uh, tryptophan um, as a precursor to serotonin, what we start to understand is that in order for tryptophan to get into the brain, it requires glucose. So we actually need to transport tryptophan across to get into the brain. And we need this tryptophan to get into that front part of the brain to produce our serotonin. So if we're starting to get insulin resistant, we don't use, utilize glucose very effectively anymore. And what happens then is that there's a barrier that exists here. And when we have our insulin resistance occurring, we can't get tryptophan over that barrier and into the brain effectively anymore unless we provide it with high amounts of glucose. So we really need to spike our sugar levels in order to get the stimulation required to get tryptophan into the brain. So quite often what happens with these people is that as soon as you create that large meal and get that huge insulin spike, now you'll dump that tryptophan into the brain, you'll get a serotonin storm. As that serotonin levels are, um, start rising, we'll get this sedentary effect of the human brain and you'll start feeling quite tired and quite, um, uh, quite probably lazy is not the right word, probably quite relaxed, it's probably a better word, okay? Almost as if you're ready to get to bed. And this is something that's indicative of insulin resistance. Okay, so this is not necessarily type 2 diabetic, but even those who are heading down that path who aren't type 2 diabetic yet, this is something that's quite indicative of that, that process. The other one that we see is when people have eaten and, and about half an hour or so afterwards they get really exhausted, but this can also be incorporated with things like confusion, brain fog, um, can also be associated with an ex excessive want to eat again, uh, to have some sweets, something like that afterwards. And in this situation what happens is we have our meal, we get um, this uh, elevation of glucose, we get a high amount of insulin that gets released, and when we get that high amount of insulin release, we all of a sudden get this huge drop in, um, uh, in our blood sugars, uh, and this is what we call a reactive hypoglycemia. So this is where blood sugars drop dramatically after you've eaten. So in other words, your post-eating glucose levels are actually lower than your fasting glucose levels, which is a real problem. And one of the big things which happens with this is that once it drops below a critical point, so let's say that's our critical point here, once our glucose levels drops below a critical point, our adrenal glands will kick in to try and release our stress hormones, in particular cortisol, to bring that value back up to try and stabilize our blood sugars. A really, really critical function. And if we don't have good adrenal function, the adrenals are exhausted, they're run down, maybe they're overworked, maybe the whole HP axis is not functioning very well, the result of all that will basically be that our stress hormones won't be able to elevate the glucose as effectively as it should. Um, we'll stay quite low and we'll maintain that low level until we've eaten again, or perhaps have a gradual increase back to normal over a few hours, okay? And this can be, again, an insulin resistance issue or an insulin dysregulation problem, uh, and it can also be a problem with adrenal dysfunction. <clears throat> Some really key important things, but these are two of the most significant and most common ways that we see people getting tired post-eating. Uh, post all right, so what are the few key things that you can do about this? All right, 
So the first one is get rid of the insulin resistance. resistance. No matter which one it is, we need to regulate blood sugars. So we can move towards a high fat, low carb style, maybe perhaps even almost a keto style diet, probably not that extreme, if you, especially if you're active hypoglycemic, um, but uh, more towards a high fat, low carb uh, diet. Uh, we can also lower the GI value, lower the glycemic index of all our carbohydrates, drop down, move to a, sl a, a slower digesting carbohydrate, which will also reduce insulin resistance. Reduce the stress in your life. This is really critical. Make sure you've got good nighttime routines, good morning routines, and just reduce that stress in your life to make the, um, the HP axis uh, less work. Do some low heart rate aerobic based exercise. Most important to try and stimulate your fat metabolism. Try and shift your energy mechanisms back towards a fat dependent uh, mechanism rather than a glucose dependent mechanism. There are a heap of supplements that really can be taken to support this mechanism as well. Um, it's something that you probably should only go down the path of with uh, some proper good advice because all these supplements uh, can work and can, can hinder if you don't know which one's using at the right time. But in terms of our adrenal stuff, all of our adaptogens are fantastic for this. So things like cordyceps, chaga, reishi mushrooms, uh, ginseng, licorice, rhodiola, these are all fantastic at trying to support this as well. Chastity very, with Thania, a couple of others. Um, our B vitamins, uh, especially things like B, vitamin B5, B12, folate can also be really important at regulating uh, serotonin production as well as adrenal function. Uh, vitamin C as well is really critical for that function. Our essential fatty acids, especially fish oils, our fish oils are really important at lowering or deactivating what we call the D5D enzyme, which is a very inflammatory type of, of enzyme. So it can help control that, which is something that's commonly in place or commonly active when we start talking about insulin resistance as well. So a couple of key little things that we can do through there. Um, in the short term, if we are going uh, hypoglycemic and have this hyp uh, reactive hypoglycemia, um, even just eating frequently, like every two or three hours, small meals grazing throughout the day rather than large meals a couple of times a day can help control this mechanism until you get all this stuff under control. So anyway guys, if you have any questions on fatigue post eating, there are very specific things we can get into, but this is a broad kind of view on the two big things that we see with it. If you do have any questions with it, please post them up, uh, PM me or DM me. Always uh, happy to help you out in any way, shape or form that we can. Anyway guys, for now, I'll uh, catch you in the next vid. Bye for now.